Hello everyone, welcome to another one of my lead code videos. So in this video we'll do student attendance record 2, which is a follow-up from the previous video where we did student attendance record 1. So if you haven't already seen that one, so I'd recommend you watch that one first. And the rules are pretty much the same as the previous one. So, you know, a student cannot be absent for more than two days to be eligible for the attendance award and the student cannot be late for three or more consecutive times in order to be eligible for the award. Um, in the last problem, we were asked to determine if the student was eligible or not. However, in this problem, what we're asked to do is given an integer n, if there are n days, then how many possible attendance records are there that makes the student eligible for the award. In this example, if there are two days, then there are eight possible ways the student is eligible for the award. If he's like present and present, absent and present, since, you know, being absent one is allowed, present, absent, and so on. And there are eight possible ways where all of these eight records of length two are valid. And obviously if the length is just one, you can be either A, L, or P. There's, so there's three ways. Um, and another thing is that the result can be large since N can be up to 10 to the five. So the final answer should be returned mod 10 to the nine plus seven. The way we would approach this is our goal is to create a valid string, right? So we want to find how many valid strings can we create that are of this length, right? So basically imagine, let's say our length is uh, four, right? So in, in this first position, we can either have P, A, or L. So for the next character, we have a similar approach, right? So it can, for if the first one is P, the next one can either be P, A, or L. However, for the A, we can only have P or L as next possible options here because you can't be absent um, two times. You can only be absent once in total, right? It'll be invalid if we have an A. Similarly, uh, if we're already late twice, we can't be late again, right? So the L is will be ineligible for this branch. So it can either only be A or P. So basically for each, uh, for each position, in order to determine how many possible characters you can have, you, we need to know two pieces of information. One is um, how many, how many times, how many absences are uh, remaining, right? How many more absences can we use? And two, how many, how many lates can we use, right? So in, in this case, we can still use our three lates. In this same thing here, here initially we can use three lates, but once we get here, we can, we have used one. So we, we can only use, uh, sorry, Initially, we can only use two lates because th make, being late thrice would make us ineligible, right? So we can use two lates here. When we get here, we can only use one more late. A and then when we get here, we can't use a late anymore because we, we have zero lates remaining. But then if we choose A or P, when we get here, we can again use, you know, three or two lates. So, with these two pieces of information and how many characters are remaining, we can basically recursively calculate how many um, valid records there are. So this is going to be a recursive solution. Um, so let's try to write the code for the recursive solution. So we'll have a private method which takes in the the remaining uh, or we can call it n 
which is basically how many the length how many more letters do we have to make we can take an integer of num absences remaining we can take an an integer of num lates remaining we'll we'll talk about optimization later so let's just um, code the base solution first so with this we'll have our base case so if n is 0 we'll return 1 because if there is no more characters left that means that's a valid way to generate a string right that's what this represents because we want to know how many ways we can generate the string right so we can say num possible records right and so if n is 0 that means we've reached the end of the string and that's like it's it's one way to create that record um, so this is a recursion base case and then what we'll just have is our total we'll set our total to zero so no matter no matter what the position is we can always be present right so so in this case let's say we pick p right so if we pick p our num possible records now is n minus one because we already used up one character and then our absence remaining doesn't change because we were present and our lates remaining resets to two because since we are present now our consecutive late count resets so we can now be like we're allowed to be two consecutive lates um, and next case is if if i'm allowed to be absent so if the num absence remaining is greater than zero then i pick a so so i add the number of this is the number if i pick p this is the number of possible records if i pick a this is the number of possible records so it's still n minus one now th that i've been absent my absences reduce so i can my number of remaining absence reduced by one and my late count remains the same because since i'm absent my consecutive late count resets and similarly if my lates remaining are greater than zero then i basically picked l so same thing the number of n letters remaining reduces number of absences remaining stays the same because i was late and then the number of lates remaining reduces by one because i was late so and then we just return our total so this is an inefficient solution however one more thing remaining here is that we haven't considered the mod right so we have to mod it by 10 to the 9 plus 7 so i'm just going to write here so here this returns an int right so this is guaranteed to be an integer but when we add something to it um, it could no longer be an integer so let's mod it with the mod and then so every time we add something we'll just mod it with the mod value and then we'll return the total and then over here we'll just say return num possible records of n absences remaining will be one because we can only be absent for maximum of one eight days lates remaining will be two because we can only be late at most two consecutive times right and so this will let's see if this works this will return a correct answer but it might be extremely inefficient because you know we, we in every branch it will kind of like rehash the value so you can see it is like a time limit exceeded and one approach to optimize this is to introduce memoization so we can add like a cache and cache based on like these three values but trust me that also results in a time limit exceeded because the the recursion becomes too deep because every time we are like recursing on n minus one it becomes too deep right so we need to come up with a way where we are able to do this 
using memoization but without recursion. So we'll use an iterative approach. So if you look at this, uh, th this recursion, we're basically just using the values from n minus one and with different uh, indexes of absence remaining and late remaining, right? So if we know the n minus one like records, we can then use that and compute the next one pretty efficiently, right? So if we'd make an iterative solution, we'd start from zero where everything is just one, right? Because if n is zero, regardless of these two, it's one. And then we'll compute the n equals to one, n equals to two and so on. So you can think of it as like a 3D array, right? So we'll call it DP just as that's the convention. It's like a 3D array of size n plus one, or we can just say n, and then number of absences remaining can either be zero or one, right? So this will be of size two, and number of lates remaining can either be zero, one, or two, so that will be of size three. And so you can think of each of these as accessing an index in an array, right? And then the zeroth row will all be filled with ones. So, but then if you, if you look, we don't actually need all the rows, right? Because for each, for each new n, we are just using the previous row. We're just using n minus one. So we don't actually need this n. We can just store a, a array saying prev dp, which represents the previous row, and then we compute the next row and replace it, right? Because we don't need to go beyond the previous row. So here we can say that for, for since for n equals zero, everything is one, we can just initialize everything uh, to one, right? So zero, zero will be one. And here the zero and zero represents absences remaining and lates remaining. So we have six rows where lates remaining can be zero, one, or two. 0, 1, or 2, and then absences remaining can either be 0 or it can be 1, right? So here, this is basically covering this case where if n is 0, then no matter what our absence and late is, our value is, our num possible records is always 1 because that's our base case, representing like we reach the end of the string. Then we just iterate for int i is equal to 1, i less than equal to n, i plus plus, right? So we go from one to n, and then we say that, okay, we first create our new dp. So this should be prev dp, by the way. Okay, so we first create our new dp, which will, will represent the values for the new row, right? So we say new in two, three, and at the end, we'll say, prev dp equals new dp. We'll fill this in a second, but what we'll return is basically in the new dp, our absences remaining are one, which is over here, and the late remaining is two, which is over here. So this basically represents the, the nth row because at the end, sorry, it will be prev dp. Because at the end of this loop, the prev dp will contain the row number n, right? So for row number n, with one absence remaining and two lates remaining, what is our value that will be returned? So now we just need to fill in this row. So we can just iterate through this array that represents our absence remaining. Then we just basically do the same code over here. So that I'll just copy this. So this one, total equals zero. Total is basically going to be our dp at al. So we won't uh, store this because new dp is already initialized to zero. So if we pick p, our new dp will be num possible records n minus one is basically prev dp. Absences remaining is a. 
and lathes remaining is 2 because if we pick p we look at prev dp for the same absence remaining uh, at 2 right that's what basically we did here now if we pick if our a is greater than 0 that means if we have more than one absence allowed then we can pick a and again instead of total we do new dp let me just replace all of those and here we don't need a return statement because that will just be this stored in the new dp and then at the end we'll return this so yeah going back here so if you pick a this again is prev dp Absences remaining is a minus 1 and lathes remaining will be 2. So yeah, if we pick a, we will be allowed two lathes and um, we reduce the number of absences and that's basically what we did over here. And then we obviously apply the mod because it can exceed the integer range. And then if lathes remaining, which is L over here, is greater than 0, then we explore the branch where we pick L. So again, this is prev dp, absence remaining doesn't change because we're late, and then late remaining reduces by one, so we do L minus one. And again, same thing we mod. And then at the end, we assign prev dp to new dp, and then iterate uh, n times at the end, whatever value is in prev dp row number n for one absence and two lates will be our final answer. And so now we can remove this recursive function and see if this thing works. Okay, oh yeah, obviously we need, so new dp al. Right, so that's the current index that we're computing. Yep, so it's accepted for the test case. Let's try to submit it. Great, accepted. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this hard problem and I'll see you in the next one.